I'm a dermatologist, consultant dermatologist in Turkey in a women's health training and uh, research hospital. I would like to talk about Bechet disease. Bechet disease is a chronic relapsing systemic vasculitis of unknown etiology with the clinical features of mucocutaneous, ocular, vascular, articular, gastrointestinal, urogenital, pulmonary, and neurological involvement. In general, the mean age of the disease onset is the third decade of life but it can occur at any of age. Although both sexes are equally affected, the syndrome runs a more severe course among young men. Disease is endemically higher in Turkey, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, China, Korea, and Japan. The prevalence is about 30 times higher approximately in the endemic countries, and Turkey is the highest incidence uh, country. Genetic susceptibility, infectious agents, immunological dysregulation, and miscellaneous abnormalities have been postulated for the initiation and progression of the disease. The allele HLA-B51 is the most strongly associated with the disease susceptibility, who live in areas along the Silk Road. Streptococcus sanguis was shown to cause BD-like symptoms in experimental gonotobiotic mice. T cells in BD patients could be activated by not only Streptococcus sanguis, but also Escherichia coli, Staphylococcus aureus, and non peptidic antigen shared by various bacteria. Moreover, neutrophil hyperactivity has also been reported both in peripheral blood and in lesional sites of the patients. Endothelial dysfunction and excessive thrombin formation with defective fibrinolysis status have been also reported. In addition to increased oxidative stress, endogenous free radical scavenging enzymes have also found to be decreased in these patients. These are the prevalence of clinical manifestations with uh, decreasing order. As we look uh, closer to the mucocutaneous manifestations, oral aftosis is almost always evident in Bechet's disease, can precede other manifestations by months or years, can be classified into minor, major, and herpet form. Major may heal with scurrying, while minor generally heal without scurrying. Occur, generally occur on the buccal mucosa and mucosa of the inner lips, tongue, heart, and soft blood. The most common differential diagnosis is recurrent after stomatitis, which affects up to 10% of the population. This is the typical uh, oral aftosis um, with red borders and white fibrin extra. General aftosis generally found on the scrotum and inguinal array in man, vulva and femoral inguinal regions in women. The Ulcers are painful and covered with fibrin layer with a surrounding edematous swelling like oral aftosis. Ulcers larger than one centimeter in diameter tend to heal with a scar. Ulcers located in major labium and femoral inguinal regions can cause scar formation, whereas the ones in minor labium and vestibule usually heal without scarring. Extra genital ulcers are rather rare, but they are located in the axillary region, inframammillary area, and interdigital area of the feet. These are the genital aftosis look like. Popular pistular lesions are frequent findings of Bechet's disease, are found on the back, chest, and shoulder areas, and less commonly on the face. According to International Study Group Diagnostic Criteria, acne form lesions in post-adolescent patients who are not on systemic uh, corticosteroid treatment are interpreted as a sign of Bechet's disease. On the other hand, acne vulgaris also can be observed in 20% of men and 35% of women over the age 30. These are the popular pistular lesions, follicular. Erythema nodosum like lesions localized symmetrically on the lower extremities as well as the thighs and sacral region. They are painful nodules and are about 1 to 5 cm in diameter. Women are more prone to develop erythema nodosum like lesions. They usually heal in 1 to 6 weeks with postlational hyperpigmentation. These are the pictures. 
Superficial thrombophlebitis are more frequently seen in men. String-like dusky red nodules are usually located on the middle side of the legs. As old lesions heal with hyperpigmentations, new ones appear. It can be associated with deep vein thrombosis. This is the bead-like superficial thrombophlebitis picture. Um, I would like to mention about other systemic uh, manifestations to be kept in mind because it is multisystemic and we've got uh, first generally dermatologists see the patients and we should ask also uh, the other symptoms uh, but should be of course um, evaluated by other specialties. Eye involvement is observed in half of the patients with a chronic relapsing bilateral varieties involving both anterior and post posterior chambers. The main symptom of anterior uveal tract inflammation is photophobia, whereas that of posterior tract inflammation is visual loss. Male patients are more likely to develop eye disease at a younger age, have more severe disease at presentation, and carry a higher risk of developing visual acute loss over long-term follow-up. Joint manifestation is seen half of the patients as either arthritis or arthralgia. Arthritis is usually monoarthritis or oligoarthritis. The most commonly involved joints are knees followed by ankles, wrists, and elbows. Radiologic irritations are quite rare. Peripheral arthritis resolves in a few weeks. <coughs> Up to one third of patients have thrombophlebitis of the superficial and or the deep veins, usually in the leg. Although there is a high frequency of thrombophlebitis in Bechet's disease, thromboembolism rarely is reported, most probably due to firm adherence of thrombi to the diseased veins. Thrombosis of the major veins, such as superior or inferior vena cava, can occasionally be seen. Occlusion of suprahepatic veins, but Cherry syndrome, is rare, but carries a high mortality. Although arterial involvement less frequent, it can cause serious aneurysm formations and or occlusions in the entire vessels. When it involves the pulmonary arteries, it is one of the most important causes of morbidity and mortality. Hemoptysis is the main symptom. Neurological manifestations, uh, patients, uh, most of the patients have parenchymal brain involvement affecting the brain stem. It is the 80%. The permanent findings are pyramidal manifestations followed by cerebellar and sensory symptoms and signs. Non-parenchymal disease, 20% is seen as intracranial hypertension due to the real sinus thrombosis manifested and presents by headaches and papilledema. Parenchymal involvement has a more serious prognosis com compared with non-parenchymal disease. Besides genital ulceration, urogenital pathology is uncommon. Orchitis is usually bilateral and very painful, while epididymitis may be painful or a painless swelling with a low relapse rate. Blood mucosal ulceration may be responsible for urinary symptoms and is probably underdiagnosed. Parenchymal renal disease, rare. The most common symptom of the gastrointestinal manifestation is right upper quadrant optimal pain followed by diarrhea and gastrointestinal bleeding, oftentimes due to mucosal ulceration with subsequent hemorrhage. In spite of the difficulties of distinguishing BD from inflammatory bowel disease, the rate of rectal or perianal involvement and fistula formation in the Bechet disease may assist in diagnosis. Cardiac involvement is uncommon. Valvular relations, myocarditis, pericarditis, coronary vasculitis, coronary and ventricular aneurysm and intracardiac thrombus formation have been infrequently reported with a poor prognosis. Atherosclerosis is probably not increased in Bechet's disease. Pulmonary manifestations are not frequently seen in this disease. They are heterogeneous and may be the result of infections possibly related to immunosuppressive treatment as well as the occurrence of vasculitis, embolism, or fibrosis. Unfortunately, there is no patognomonic test. The diagnosis is based on critical criteria. I would like to uh, talk about the two criteria which is used uh, widely. First one is international study group diagnostic criteria. According to this criteria, 
recurrent oral ulceration must be present in all the patients. And um, plus two of the followings should be present. These are recurrent genital ulceration, eye lesions, skin lesions, and positive pathology tests. Although recurrent oral ulceration, recurrent genital ulcerations can be, uh, and skin lesions um, can be um, observed by physician or patient, eye lesions should be observed by ophthalmologists uh, according to this criteria. But I strongly recommend the latest international criteria for Bechet disease because all stomatitis, oral or genital uh, ulcers are not after stomatitis. It can differ. And um, according to international criteria for Bechet disease, they are uh, giving points, two points for oral aphthosis, genital aphthosis, uh, ocular lesions, while they are uh, giving one point to skin lesions, neurological manifestation, vascular manifestations. P uh, pathology test is optional. If you do and uh, it is positive, uh, they give one point. And f uh, a patient scoring four points or above was classified as having PD disease. To this criteria, the addition of neurological and muscular manifestation to this diagnostic criteria will permit early referral of these patients to expert centers because mortality of the disease was reported higher in patients with vascular and neurological involvement. As we all know, pathology test is the hyperreactivity of the skin that occurs in response to minimal, minimal trauma. The test is generally applied to the hairless side of the forearm skin. After cleaning with alcohol, 20 gauge needles are inserted in an oblique or perpendicular angle. At least three skin punctures should be applied. After 24 or 48 hours, a popular reaction larger than two millimeter of diameter surrounded by erythema or a pistol re uh, reaction is considered as a positive reaction. This is the typical positive pathology test. These are the differential diagnoses should be kept in mind in the diagnosing Bechet's disease. If you look at the management, the multisystem nature of the Bechet's disease requires an interdisciplinary approach to ensure effective treatment. Close monitoring and appropriate treatment may control and change the course of the disease. It is wise to remember that especially male patients and those early onset disease are associated with more severe presentations, including major vessel disease, ocular, gastrointestinal, and neurological involvement, and therefore require more aggressive treatment. There is an evidence-based European League against rheumatism recommendations for the management of Bechet disease which was developed in 2008. According to these recommendations, any patients with PD and inflammatory eye disease affecting the posterior segment should be on a treatment regime that includes azotoepirin and systemic corticosteroids. If the patient has severe eye disease, defined as 0.2 lines of drop in visual acuity on a 10, to 10 scale and or retinal disease, it is recommended that either cyclosporine A or infliximab be used in combination with azotoprene and corticosteroids. Alternatively, interferon alpha with or without corticosteroids could be used instead. There is no firm evidence to guide the management of major vessel disease in BD. For the management of acute deep vein thrombosis in BD, immunosuppressive agents such as corticosteroids, azotoprene, cyclophosphamide, cyclosporine A are recommended. For the management of pulmonary and peripheral arterial aneurysm, cyclophosphamide and corticosteroids are recommended. Similarly, there are no controlled data on or evidence of benefit from uncontrolled experience with anticoagulants, antiplatelet, and fibrolytic agents in the management of deep vein thrombosis or for the use of anticoagulation for the arterial lesions of BD. There is no evidence based treatment that can be recommended for the management of gastrointestinal involvement of BD. 
agents such as sufacilizin, corticosteroids, azotropine, TNF alpha antagonists, and thalidomide should be tried first before surgery except in emergencies. In, in most patients with BD, arthritis can be managed with cautiousing. There are no control data to guide the management of central nervous system, system involvement in BD. For parenchymal involvement agents to be tried may include corticosteroids, interferon alpha, azotioprine, ciclophosphamide, metotrexate, and TNF-alpha antagonists. For, uh, for drusenes thrombosis, corticosteroids are recommended. Cyclosporine A should not be used in BD patients with central nervous system involvement unless necessary for intraocular inflammation. The decision to treat skin and mucosa involvement will depend on the perceived severity by the doctor and the patient. Mucocutaneous involvement should be treated according to the dominant or codominant lesions present. Topical measures, for example, local corticosteroids, should be the first line of treatment for isolated oral and genital ulcers. Acne-like lesions are usually of cosmetic concern only. Thus, topical measures as used in acne vulgaris are sufficient. Cautiousin should be preferred when the dominant lesion is erythromonodosum. Leg ulcers in BD might have different causes. Treatment should be planned accordingly. Azotypharin, interferon alpha, TNF alpha antagonist may be considered in resistant cases. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, very nice, uh, very nice overview. Are there any questions? For an indefinite time period. Is that um, my question? The what is the prognosis of patients presenting with recurrent orogenital ulcers? Do they continue treat these, uh, having these treatments, or there is any span of time in which they will heal up, or, yes. or maybe your experience on this? Yes. Uh, after diagnosing as uh, Bechet disease, according to the year, uh, clinical manifestations, if they have only uh, dermatologic uh, prog um, manifestations like oral or genital ulcers, um, first topically, uh, but if it is continued to recur, generally uh, cautious in 1.5 uh, milligram day, um, Evaluating patients uh, first two weeks, then monthly, and three months, and uh, asking the patients the frequency of the um, ulcers um, and how long does it last, um, and gradually um, reducing the dose of the cautiousin. Also, antioxidants, uh, we uh, give also antioxidant vitamin E, but if there are other um, yearly follow-up or an, an acute attack of ocular, because ocular neurological and vascular uh, manifestations um, have bad prognosis, but uh, oral or genital, they, the, the worst thing is the scar but uh, visual loss can be seen in ocular manifestations, neurological, vascular, they have high mortality and morbidity. Thank you. 